regularly scheduled meeting of the Harlington City Commission, which has been duly posted to order. And uh, I'll call upon Commissioner Mike Mesmar to lead us in an invitation. Uh, before I leave the prayer, I just want to tell everybody today's December 6th on the new calendar at St. Nicholas Day. Uh, St. Nicholas lived in the 300s, and you would know St. Nicholas as Santa Claus. Uh, that's who our societies have morphed them into. Uh, but so I'm thankful to St. Nicholas, and I want to say, the Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, welcome, everybody. Glad to see you all out here on this uh, cold and kind of wintry night. Nice to, nice to have everybody here. Item one on the agenda is going to be an announcement by, uh, it says uh, Yvonne Laughlin, but I think it's actually going to be Rick Bailly, uh, HUB representative, uh, to publicly invite the City Commission to the 100th HEB curbside location across Texas event scheduled for December 22nd, 2017 at 9 a.m. at the HEB store, 1103 Morgan Street, Parliament. Is that right? So Rick and, uh, and your and everybody that uh, you want to bring up with your delegation, come, come on up and, and tell us about it. That's it. <laughs> Mayor Boswell, City Commissioners, uh, first of all, we want to say thank you for putting us on the agenda uh, this evening and also to publicly invite each and every one of you, to, uh, as Mayor Boswell said, to our 100th uh, curbside celebration. This is going to be the 100th uh, for the entire company. This is why it's so special. We have 20 dignitaries from HEB, which we're not allowed to say who they're going to be but uh, at this time, but that are going to be coming down. Uh, just for this particular event. This is a, a once in a lifetime event for HEB and we're proud of this is gonna be our 100th store that we've opened in curbside and to have it here in Harlingen is even more special. That's what makes it even more special for us at the Morgan store. I myself am the unit director, Rick Bailly, and then of course I have Diego, my assistant store director, Diego Garza, and of course George Garcia, which will be leading the curbside team uh, when we open on December the 22nd. So at this time, like we said, uh, I want to publicly invite each and every one of you on December the 22nd at 9 a.m. We will be having a ribbon cutting. We are gonna be having uh, some other events, uh, mariachis and everything else has already been scheduled. That's how big we're, this curbside celebration is. And like we said, you know, we're born in Texas and this just makes it a lot more influential for us and to and for you guys to be a part of this celebration would truly honor us uh, here in Harlingen but also HEB so again you know thank you for having us here this evening and again you're more than welcome to attend the celebration on the 22nd all right well thank uh, it sounds like it's gonna be an exciting event so thank you for the invitation and we'll be there awesome right. thank you y'all right. have a great evening Item two is a presentation by Wayne Lowry, the Executive Director for Habitat for Humanity regarding the Brush Up Harlingen <coughs> Program. Wayne. Thank you, Mayor and City Commission, Dan and staff. I did not bring cookies, but I am bringing <laughs> good news. Um, Next time. Well, <laughs> that may, uh, would, you like a, would you like a cookie? <laughs> we have well, we have they told money. me if I cross this line, they're going to tackle me. So <laughs> I'm going to stand right here. Um, so, I, I am here to, uh, to talk a little bit about some good news uh, on a project that's, that's been in uh, Dan's mind, Mr. Serna's mind for some time, and we're very, very thrilled to announce 
a joint effort, a partnership between Habitat for Humanity, Keep Harlingen Beautiful, and of course the City of Harlingen, and that is Brush Up Harlingen. And with me, I want to recognize Mr. Ford Kinsley, who is the um, board president for Keep Harlingen Beautiful, and I also have some of my staff, Phoebe Cepeta, formerly of the Harlingen Chamber, uh, now our director of development, and Eribeto Orta, who is our program director. Um, and so <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about the program, and then uh, Ford's going to say a few words as well. Uh, so Brush Up Harlingen is a, uh, is a program that was initiated in Victoria from a sister affiliate, and they so graciously allowed us to take on that name and, and bring this program to the Valley. So Brush Up Harlingen is our new initiative, the first of, our, of its kind in the Valley. Phase one will address five uh, homes in a designated area by the city of Harlingen for beautification. Now, the goal is that we're budgeting $1,500 per house, so it's going to be exterior work only. It's going to be painting, um, also replacing rotten trim. Uh, so very much a beautification, home preservation type initiative. Uh, recipients must qualify for the program. I uh, also want to recognize Tammy uh, Jackson, who uh, works really closely with us and helps us in, in this process as well, identifying and qualifying the family. We're going to have an event date. It's going to be scheduled between January 15th and March 15th. Uh, we're still pending a few steps along the way uh, as far as qualifying families before we're able to set an uh, exact date for that event. But what we're looking at is a blitz type event where we're, we're expecting 50 to 100 people of the community to come together. There will be trash pickup. There will be beautification. We're going to take a very specific designated area for us to work in. So I want to talk a little bit about the roles and responsibility from each uh, organization. First off, Habitat for Humanity will cover all the insurance and liability concerns. Of course, we provide volunteer lab, uh, liability waivers for those that want to volunteer with Habitat for Humanity. We will do the marketing for Brush Up Harlingen, including our Facebook campaigns and all other community events, of course, partnering with our other uh, partners to get the word out. We'll also screen, identify, and qualify potential Brush Up Harlingen recipients from home owned and occupied by families within the designated program area. So that, again, this is not for situations where there's tenants and a landlord. We're not trying to assist a landlord, but these are <coughs> owner occupied uh, dwellings where we're gonna put this, these resources into. Habitat will also oversee all construction related activities, including any prep work needed prior to the event date. Habitat will provide safety instruction, training, and supervision on the job site. We will also provide the tools, paint, uh, paintbrushes, bug spray, sunscreen, gloves, safety glasses, and other construction supplies on the job site. Uh, again, as, as many of you know, Habitat, we build new houses. We do uh, our aging in place program. This is a, a next logical step. We have a lot of that material already in our possession, so it will be easy for us to transition and use a lot of the same resources. We'll also be responsible for all procurement and payment. Uh, if there happens to be any subcontractors, although we don't expect any in this phase, uh, we will take on that responsibility as well. And in addition to that, we will pr start promoting the Harlingen Recycling Center, which is the driving funding source for this project. So we were going to promote the Recycling Center with a minimum of two Facebook posts per month to help try to drive revenue. In addition to that, although it's not on the PowerPoint, um, we are in our new facility on First Street, once it's opened, uh, we are going to have a additional uh, recycling drop-off area that we are designating in that spot, and then we're going to transport that to kind of take that burden off of the, res off the responsibility from the, the city's department. We're going to transport that on a daily or bi-daily basis to the recycling center. We expect having that additional drop-off spot <coughs> with additional hours will allow people from that side of town to more easily um, and, and more frequently contribute towards the recycling center. So uh, a little bit more, uh, I will read this and then let Ford talk about this, unless you wanna cover this. You wanna cover this, Ford? Sure. All right. Uh, again, good evening, thank you for having us here. Uh, Keep Arms and Beautiful is excited to be a part of this when Mr. Cerna called us in to, to give us his, his vision of this. It was a on something that falls right in with the mission of what Keep Harlingen Beautiful is, and we uh, we're going to fund this project to the tune of nine thousand dollars, so that uh, Wayne has the necessary funds to get this going. 
obviously we'll be providing a lot of the, the grunt labor for this. Wayne has his dedicated volunteers already, but uh, the kind folks at uh, TSTC and my little workforce out there at Marine Military Academy will always be available to assist in, in these projects here. And we'll uh, keep track and monitor and evaluate their participation. Uh, marketing, as, as Wayne said also, on the Keep <coughs> Arms and Beautiful websites and Facebook pages, uh, ads in the paper, things of that nature. And uh, we'll work with code compliance to make sure that all this uh, stuff, hopefully this will be done as, uh, as part of a neighborhood clean sweep program as well uh, when we're in that area. So we'll be able to work with them on getting all the trash removed at the end of it so it's not laying there in the street. And so to talk a little bit about, that's a little bit about phase one. Phase two, we see this as a developing relationship and partnership. We hope to leverage the funds that are coming in from Keep Ponds and Beautiful via the Recycling Center. And we hope to leverage those funds to get more buy-in from the community, both in private donors, corporate donors, and so forth, so that the $9,000 contribution to get this started will be matched by other supporters. Uh, we do hope this, is, I mean, this project's gonna be uh, for the first quarter. We do hope that it's successful and that we're able to continue to grow this project with additional buy-in. Uh, but part of phase two is we recognize that there are going to be additional needs even in this designated area that, that this project, this program won't be able to satisfy. So we have reached out and have different um, uh, partners that we're, we've already reached out to to assist us in additional uh, parts of this project. So one of those is kind of an internal referral and that is to our Aging in Place program, Habitat's Aging in Place program. We do have a uh, funding source through United Way that we will have access to separate and apart from the brush up Harlingen. So if we get into a situation where it's a senior that's eligible and we need to add a rail or, or build a ramp, we can do that with our assist, uh, additional funds through Aging in Place. Um, we also, uh, Ms. Uh, Tammy and I met with the Community Action Corporation of South Texas who does weatherization and they are very interested uh, in our referrals for weatherization. So they've agreed to partner with us on that. And uh, if we get into a situation where they need a new roof or need some other critical home repairs, um, although phase one, we're not aiming to tackle those, we are be, uh, being mindful of that, that need. And again, we're trying to have a high impact across a block or multiple homes in one area to try to inspire and encourage that entire area uh, to lift themselves up. And so Brush Up Harlingen is about lifting up and esteeming and empowering um, an impoverished part of our community to give them uh, a sense of pride of home ownership and to help them maintain the great resource that a home is. So that's what we have. Any questions uh, by the, the commission or mayor? Anybody have any questions? I think this is a great, uh, great initiative and uh, great partnership uh, as we've you know, gone into neighborhoods over the last few years and um, torn down dilapidated buildings and, and structures that are uh, crime magnets and graffiti magnets. Uh, and as you have come back into those neighborhoods with Habitat for Humanity uh, and built new homes, uh, this is a way that uh, we can continue the effort of of really uh, trying to improve the look of the neighborhoods. And, and I think it's a great idea. Congratulations to uh, the staff and, and you all for uh, bring, uh, making this idea come to life and become a reality. So I look forward to getting started with it. Thank, yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item three is a presentation by the Harlem Police Department executive staff and district representatives to present recognition plaques to sponsors of the annual Run with the Heroes. Chief. Mayor, Commissioner, City Manager, thank you very much for having us. Um, it's hard to believe this is our third year of the Run with the Heroes RGV uh, 2017 year and we've come this morning, we didn't bring cookies either but we brought a lot of money to give away to four <laughs> great charities and uh, so I'd like to, if I could ask the Mayor and Commissioners to, to uh, gather with our sponsors in the front, we'll take a quick group photo but this event doesn't happen on its own. And when I got here in 2015, I reached out to June and Edith Eliermo, who have done a tremendous job of helping us organize this event. And it went from a couple of hundred folks to 
consistently now over the last couple of years, seven, eight hundred runners in one of the biggest 5Ks in, the, in South Texas. Uh, and we've consistently raised a, a great deal of money from our generous community and our sponsors. So I'm going to call our sponsors out and those that are here, if you can come up front and receive your plaque. Uh, Oil Patch Fuel and Supply, Zanita Loya Keller Williams, South Texas Emergency Care, Bert Ogden Hyundai, Briggs Coleman, Harlingen Medical Center, LNF Distributors, Avant Water Stations, Palms Behavioral Center, Toyota of Beeville, or Brownsville, I'm sorry. <laughs> A little farther south. <laughs> Trinity, uh, Charlie Clark Nissan, Supreme Mortgage, Target Stores, Texas Regional Bank, Bonham Realty, Connie De La Garza, All About Kids Home Health, Stericycle, RGVCU, La Vaquita, Veranda, Valley Federal Credit Union, Crunch Fitness, Burke Dental, Unifirst, Watermill Express, and China Restaurant, as well as Footworks and the Harlingen Consolidated Independent School District, who's been out there every year with us, their uh, symphony along the route, as well as a couple of drum lines to have, add live music, a uh, little bit of Keep Harlingen Weird <coughs> on the run for us. And I want to thank uh, South Texas Emergency Care and the Harlingen Fire Department who have done a tremendous job partnering with us uh, and putting on a great event. Can we get a picture with you, Mayor and Commissioner, City Manager? Spread out. Spread out across the So this year's totals, I'm pretty excited. Uh, it's the most money we've been able to give away so far in the last three years. Uh, our four charities, Susan G. Coleman Breast Cancer Awareness is receiving $2,500. Since we were so blessed and fortunate uh, this year to dodge Hurricane Harvey, we felt compelled to add a charity. We normally do three, but we added for Hurricane Harvey Relief American Red Cross for $2,500. Special Olympics South Texas RGV, $2,500. And our very own City of Harlingen Humane Society, $7,500. Wow. So for a total of $15,000 this year. So if we can give our sponsors a great big round of applause. Yeah. We've got one special presentation, Mayor, and that's to uh, Briggs, who has been a platinum sponsor for the last three years, contributing $5,000 every year to the run and our charities. So we've got a special uh, display case and presentation to them. So.
so I kind of I got to kind of break it up into two segments. I still had to walk home. <laughs> Nobody gave me a ride, so I did the whole course. I just, you know, I got to... All right, well, congratulations. We look forward to doing that again next year. It's been a great, great uh, benefit to these worthy charities. So thanks to all, all who participated. Now we've got a presentation number number four, a report from the internal auditor. Danny Coyle. Mayor, <coughs> Commissioners, Mr. Serena, good evening. It's going to be hard to be as uplifting as the last few presentations, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, I, have, uh, I have a handout. Should I bring this up or? Uh, okay. Sorry, <laughs> okay. I need, need a pointer. Okay. Back and forth. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, two years. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so again, Mayor Boswell, Commissioners, Mr. Serena, good evening. Thank you for uh, this opportunity to report the activities and accomplishments of your internal audit department for the last two years. Danny Coyle, uh, internal auditor. Um, by way of introduction, every organization has goals and objectives that it works to achieve. And in pursuit of the objectives, the organization will encounter events and circumstances that may threaten the achievement of those uh, objectives. So by way of introduction <clears throat> and in perspective, I have prepared the following to illustrate the city's response to the possible risks and threats to the city's goals and objectives. These are the responses that are in place today <clears throat> and uh, activities that have occurred in the past that lead to where we are uh, today. So in, in, uh, in June of 2006, the city established a uh, code of ethics requiring city officials and employees to be independent, impartial, and responsible to the, uh, to the citizens. Is this? Or is it this one here? Whoops, that turned it off. Okay, sorry. All right. There we go. I guess I'm not pointing in the right direction. <clears throat> uh, your efforts to serve, uh, uh, to set the tone at the top for good uh, government and accountability uh, and transparency. In 2008, the city established by ordinance the procedures for the appointment of the internal auditor. And the ordinance established qualifications, duties, and responsibilities of the position. In June of that same year, the powers, qualifications, and responsibilities of the audit committee were established. City charter establishes senior management's responsibility for the selection, development, and evaluation of internal controls to achieve the objectives or, of the organization. And uh, each group within the lines of defense should have clearly defined roles and responsibilities that are supported by appropriate policies, procedures, and reporting mechanisms. Right here. Internal audit provides response to senior management and the governing body on the <clears throat> adequacy of government, governance, risk, and controls. Internal audit should include within its scope all of the organization's significant risks and control activities. <clears throat> Over the last two years, in total, <clears throat> internal audit has focused primarily on the city's cash handling activities at the request of the audit committee. I keep doing that. Sorry. <clears throat> and all performance audits are conducted in accordance with generally accepted government auditing standards established by the Government Accountability Office. Those professional standards are the same that the external auditors uh, follow in uh, offering their opinion on the financial uh, statements that are included within the comprehensive annual report filed annually. In all matters relating to the audit work, the audit organizational and the internal auditor must be independent. Uh, the standards establish requirements for due care in conducting audits including adequate planning, identifying appropriate criteria, evidence, and the proper reporting. 
The, sta the standards establish requirements for due care and in conducting audits, including uh, uh, the standards that must meet certain uh, continuing professional education requirements. And finally, uh, third party assurance of the internal auditor's quality control program is required under the standards. City policy also requires follow up audits uh, to the recommendations to which man management has committed in, the, in its management responses. So, since joining the city in, in 2015, internal audit has issued seven performance audits, one agreed upon procedures review, and two required follow up audits. In fiscal 2016, internal audit completed four performance audits. I'm just no good at this. <clears throat> and one agreed procedures review. The agreed upon procedure review was requested by the finance director and uh, the municipal court administrator. In fiscal 2017, <coughs> internal audit completed three performance audits. These are right here. And two fo required follow up reviews. The audit projects in green will be presented to the audit committee next month for review and approval of the 20, fiscal 2018 audit work plan. The governing body, the audit committee and management may also uh, request an audit project. So, summary of recommendations. From the seven uh, performance audits issued, internal audit made 89 recommendations <coughs> to improve internal control, efficiency, <coughs> or program effectiveness. Examples of the re recommendations include developing or strengthening internal policies and working instructions specific to department operations and relative to the risk of, its, of achieving its goals. Improving safeguard over city assets and personnel. Strengthening user access over an enterprise software applications aligning fees and charges with city ordinances and agreeing subledger activity <clears throat> within the enterprise software to the city's general ledger. City administration agreed with 96% of the uh, recommendations and committed to implementing policies, working instructions and processes to strengthen internal controls and to improve efficiencies and effectiveness. So at the end of the last two fiscal years, the audit committee, senior management, and the external auditor per participated in an evaluation of the internal auditor. An annual evaluation is recommended by the Institute of Internal Auditors as a professional best practice. Respondents were asked to evaluate the internal auditor based <coughs> on the following evaluation criteria. <clears throat> Compliance with the internal audit charter and planned level of performance or the annual audit plans, overall comprehensiveness of the audit plan with, in relationship to the strategic objectives of the city, uh, the delivery of timely internal audit services and the competency of the internal auditor. The results of the, uh, of the evaluation indicate uh, improvement in the evaluation from administration <coughs> and the external auditor and also improvement in the, uh, from the audit committee from the prior year. So what's next? I'm going to click the right button. The internal audit maturity model describes five levels of internal audit activity in accordance with its set of capabilities. At the lowest levels, uh, levels one and two, right there and there. These are the levels, these are the capabilities, these are all the uh, processes, services provided. <clears throat> uh, they're characterized by the absence of infrastructure, lack of adherence to established professional practices, and partial compliance with the professional standards and audit planning based on uh, management uh, priorities. On the higher levels, three, four, and five, the capabilities are characterized by compliance with the professional standards, focus on independence and objectivity, documentation of audit processes, policies and procedures, and an established quality assurance uh, and improvement program. 
level four and five, internal audit function works closely with the organization's governance and management to develop uh, annual risk-based plans that aim to address risk uh, to the entire entity's goals and objectives. My assessment of the department's <coughs> level of uh, maturity model is illustrated on the, on the screen. Uh, with your support and continued uh, internal audit efforts, my goal will be to achieve greater maturity for the department and effectiveness and, and efficiency for the city and its citizens. So, in conclusion, the last two years covered by this presentation uh, have been pr productive and challenging and rewarding. And I'd like to thank you, Mayor, and the Audit Committee and the uh, City Commissioners for your support. And I also am very appreciative to uh, Mr. Serena uh, for his support and the cooperation of his staff uh, over the last two years. And that concludes my presentation, and I'm here to answer any questions. You, you want a cookie? <laughs> I, I think I'm going to need one. <laughs> Danny, for the benefit of the public, why don't you just read off from your page there the, the departments that have been audited in 2016 and 2017? Uh, yes, sir. I, starting with the municipal court and all those. Yes, sir. Uh, read them off? Yeah. Okay. Well, <coughs> No, from, from here. The graph, Dan. The graph. Oh, this okay. One. Got that one. There you go. We've got the <coughs> municipal court. That's right. Uh, municipal court, public works, the way station, uh, operations, the Harlingen Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Tony, but Tony Butler Golf Course were the performance audits. The municipal court special project was uh, related to a uh, uh, agreed upon procedure for uh, time payment fees. Um, in fiscal 2017, uh, internal audit issued reports uh, regarding cash handling for the Harlingen <coughs> Public Library, uh, Police Grant Management, uh, Planning and Development Department, and uh, completed two follow-up audits for the uh, Municipal Court and the Harlingen uh, Visitors and Convention Bureau. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, does so anybody have any questions for uh, Danny, I think? Uh, those of us who are on the audit committee get to get to see what's going on on a quarterly basis because we meet on a quarterly basis, and I think it's a great idea to uh, bring uh, Danny uh, uh, to our meeting at, uh, at, with the public and, and let him explain uh, some of the things that he's doing. And also, for, uh, for folks who are not familiar with this position, uh, the the the, uh, the internal auditor position. Uh, also reports directly to the city commission. Uh, but I think uh, what's really made this, uh, uh, the last two years uh, work so well is because of the, of the excellent work cooperation between our city administration, the city manager, and, um, uh, and the internal auditor uh, to uh, get so much done really in, in two years and, and to bring this sort of methodical uh, check and balance uh, to our operation that while we have a, gr a great team of external auditors, we really need this function uh, to work as it's working and, and I'm, I'm real pleased and proud of the work that's being done and so I'm, I'm, I think everybody involved in this process should be congratulated. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll next. Next, turn next to uh, number, item number five, which is the status report of the convention center. We'll ask the city manager to tell us about uh, that. I want to ask Carlos to, to present the report, but before I do, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, I'd like to introduce our new public works director, mm -hmm. Selena Gonzalez. Selena Gonzalez <coughs> comes to us from Los, uh, Los Fresnos, where she was the assistant city manager for several years, and we were able to take, him, take her away from Los Fresnos and uh, she, she accepts the position and she hit the ground running and she's doing a fantastic job in a very short period of time. So we're happy she's here and we expect great things from her. Uh, thank you, Dan, and thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for allowing me to be here. Um, uh, I'm honored, I'm excited, and I'm blessed to be here and to be a part of our reunion. So thank you. All right, welcome to the team. We're glad to have you on board. I'm equally ecstatic that she's here. <laughs> uh, Mayor, commissioners, thank you for this time. Uh, I'm 
in the interest of time, I placed a copy of the PowerPoint presentation on, on your desk there. And so I'm going to kind of browse through it or fly through it. If, if you have or need additional information, please feel free to, to uh, stop me and ask, ask that question. I'm here to report on the progress of the construction phase on the convention center. And then uh, uh, Gabe is here too, uh, also to report on the, uh, uh, he's been working with the developer on the uh, marketing efforts too. So on the uh, construction part of it, I'm again happy to report that the contractor has begun. They started moving or turning dirt out in the, on the job side. Uh, we have again a 44,000 plus square foot facility that's being built. And so uh, the mobilization that's have a, that has occurred at this point is involves the developer clearing the property, removing the trees, the green, pr pretty much all that green area that's, yeah, that's on that um, eight, eight acre track. Uh, it's pretty much uh, been cleared at this point. Uh, there's a lot of over excavation that's required in, in, uh, in order to establish a sound foundation for the, for the facility. And so that required them to remove three feet from the existing uh, surface elevation. They were going three feet down and they're going to bring it up uh, eight feet. Uh, so it's three feet plus an additional five feet. The, the finish elevation is going to be at or above two feet above the, the backup curb of the uh, of the uh, on the street uh, level. <clears throat> uh, our plan here is to provide you an update on a monthly basis and as the project progresses we're also going to invite you to visit the site with us. We'll arrange a tour for you all to to visit and, and look and have a, a, a personal feel of of what's going on out in the job site. Uh, like I said most of the work that's being done right now is, is uh, has been ex excavation, moving dirt, and the uh, contractor at this point has started bringing in some of the fill to again raise the elevation pad for the uh, uh, for the for the building itself. Uh, the, uh, here in this uh, photographs that I, uh, that I'm uh, at is again showing the uh, trucks bringing in the um, the fill, and uh, it 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 seems like the progress is kind of slow at this point because one there's over 35,000 cubic yards of dirt that are coming in, and they got to they got to compact it on a eight-inch thick uh, uh, lips, and so we they they lay it down, they compact it, we test it, and they they add another eight inches, and so forth. So it's it's been somewhat of a tedious uh, and slow uh, moving uh, process. We hope that they, uh, and based on the schedule, that they'll start doing utilities and start working or forming the foundation. Uh, within the next two to three weeks. Uh, in summary, the uh, convention center project, again, the contractor that's on board is Killian Construction. Uh, their official start date was October the 9th, uh, uh, 2017. The amount uh, paid out at this point uh, to the contractor is $95,059.66 uh, at this point. The uh, level of completion is at 2%. Uh, again, the contract days or the uh, timeline for schedule for this project is, is 12 months, 365 calendar days. And at this point, uh, there's only been a day and a half of rain delays, per se. Um, on the uh, marketing efforts, I'm going to pass it over to, to uh, Gabe. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, Mayor, members of the Commission, City Manager, uh, the marketing efforts for the Convention Center go back to 2016. At the Texas Municipal League annual conference, we actually handed out rack cards uh, for the convention center. Uh, it had the preliminary site plan and just uh, noticed that it was coming in 2018. Um, in 2017, um, Texas Municipal League, Municipal League annual conventions, we actually had the rack card along with the current site plan that Carlos showed you earlier uh, on that rack card. Uh, since that time, uh, Brandon has met with the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and they've been working on the rental rates for the Convention Center. They've got preliminary rates, and he's going to make a presentation to the council uh, within 30 days or so on those rates, along with the marketing plan as well. Now, one of the things that we haven't addressed yet, but that's going to have to be uh, addressed sooner or later, is the, uh, the back of the house. He's indicated that there will be no outside food that will be allowed into the Convention Center, so we're going to have to decide uh, how he's going to handle that. And he's probably going to hire a, um, 
a company to actually provide uh, the food products for the convention center, but we haven't addressed that yet. But that's something that's going to be uh, worked on shortly. Um, he um, also gave us a preliminary marketing plan, but his marketing uh, analyst was here in the valley and was going to visit McAllen, South Padre, and Brownsville just to compare their convention center to ours. And then with that information, provide a report back to the council on where he wants to be with the race. <coughs> um, so that's what we've been doing so far. We have been active uh, with the marketing and we plan to be more aggressive once we get the rental rates established. Uh, that way we can actually market it more aggressively to, to planners and promoters. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have about the marketing component. Yeah, the rental rates will have to come to City Council for approval yes. along with the annual budget, the operating budget for the convention center. Uh, so we have been pushing pretty hard to get the rental rates and the marketing plan completed so that we can move on to the budgeting phase. Uh, so we, we're making more progress as of late than we had for the past two, three months. Uh, we expect him to, Brandon, to be here probably the next meeting, uh, either the 20th or the 3rd, uh, to present what he proposes for rental rates. Uh, and then soon after, we'll present, he'll present the budget to propose that. All right. Very good. Does anybody have any questions? All right. Thank, thank you for that report. I think this is a <coughs> appreciate. Uh, I think this is a great idea to give uh, give us and the community a uh, uh, periodic update on the convention center in progress. So with that, we go to item six, which is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of November first, two thousand seventeen. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing that, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Next items are the uh, consent agenda, items 7A through H. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So moved, Mayor. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion <laughs> carries. Item A, consideration possible action on a request to amend the agreement between the Development Corporation of Harlem and the Qualcomm Data Services Group and authorize the Mayor to sign the agreement. Rodell. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Commissioners. I'm still smiling. <laughs> um, Somebody go pinch him. Let's <laughs> no, I'd still open that gift, and I'm just watching it, looking at it. It's Rodell L. Smiley. <laughs> um, unfortunately, not everything is as good news as we had in the last couple of days, but um, um, and this is one of those that um, not too bad though. There's some some hope yet here. Uh, Qualphone opened up uh, two and a half years ago and started out gangbusters hiring a lot of people. They went up to uh, almost 300 employees. 147 of those actually qualified under the incentive program that we had with them, uh, whereby we gave them $200,000 up front and they earned $1,000 per job created that met our requirements, which was basically they have to be there at least nine months have to be full-time offering benefits and a certain salary level, which was over $9 an hour. Um, so 147 of those did meet those requirements and we forgave $147,000 of that $200,000 loan. So there was still $53,000 outstanding, which should have been taken care of within the first 24 months of operations. Unfortunately, because of their business and the way their business comes and goes sometimes, uh, they laid off some folks and that didn't happen. However, um, as the economies go up and down and business goes up and down, they are starting to rehire folks now. And right now they're up to 128 employees. Uh, and their projections are that they're gonna continue to hire um, probably at a pretty aggressive place over the next couple of years. Um, what they have asked us to do is basically extend the time necessary to create those 200 jobs and maintain those 200 jobs to basically the end of their of their lease term, which was back in to uh, extend it out to, um, I'm looking for the date. 2019? 2019. October 31st? Yeah, yeah. And so the board, the EDC board looked at it and said, we don't have anything to lose by, by doing that. Um, they're operating right now. They're gonna continue to operate. They've created some jobs, not as many as we wanted initially, but they've created some jobs and their outlook is positive, so let's go ahead and do it. And uh, back in November, 
we went ahead and, and approved it at the at the board level, but it does require city commission approval as well. Any questions? So the EDC board has already, has already approved. Yes, sir. And, Back. and recommends the approval of the and recommended the approval to the city commission as well. And, so, uh, and as they as they get as they get contracts for service, and sometimes they lose contracts for service, and then they get new contracts for service. Uh, uh, they can, they, they're, they're continuing an operation. They expanded that. They they brought that building back to life. It was, it was an empty building. There was nothing, uh, and that building made a big investment in the building, and they're continuing to utilize the building. And, and so, uh, all right. Uh, does anybody have any questions? <coughs> then we need a motion to approve. Okay. We, have a a motion, we have a motion and a second to uh, approve the uh, uh, amendment to the agreement uh, uh, extending the time. So any uh, any of that discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a safe trip, man. Thank you. Item 9 is public hearing and presentation regarding the fiscal year 16-17 consolidated annual performance and evaluation report. Good evening, Tammy. Good evening. Had to get my little instructions. Um, we're required to have a public hearing before we approve the or submit the plan to uh, HUD. The what I have for you is just a summary. Of what if what we've accomplished during the year? Uh, initially, when our one-year action plan that's before you, we say we're going to accomplish these uh, items, and this is a report that we have to submit to HUD based on that. Um, ideally, what we try to do is, is actually have a positive impact on the low to moderate income po population, especially in the, in the neighborhoods, um, and also through the services that we provide through partnering with the nonprofit organizations. We've had a little bit of a challenge in, in continuing to do that throughout the years because, as you can see, we've had significant cuts to the program. Um, although we, uh, for 2018, the, pro the program was proposed to be totally eliminated. Um, it appears as if that's not going to happen, so we'll be around a little bit longer. Um, the unexpended balance from last year for projects uh, were $829,987.04. Then we got our 16-17 entitlement grant. Uh, we received $55,519.86 in program income from that, from the homes that we've assisted in the repayment of those loans that we've provided to them at 0, 1, or 2 percent interest on those loans. Um, and then we expended 961395 35 cents, which, so coming in as of October 1st, we'll have 720, $210.55 cents to spend um, on the projects that are for the upcoming year. I've provided a chart to give you kind of a cumulative idea of where our expenditures were. We were able to, we spent um, 338000 approximately in the affordable housing program. And in addition to that, 88,000 in program income. Um, and that was for to acquire six homes um, and to construct six homes. We also uh, spent funding on the clearance and demolition program in partnership with the National Guard and park improvements to Bonham, which you'll see um, in partnership with the Parks Department. The street improvements that we're undertaking during the year and completed um, with the help of our engineering department, of course, um, were off of the Ranger Road Road. And that project alone benefited 1,085 uh, people, of which 800 were low to moderate income. We were, um, had Monon Park underway. We have installed the uh, playground equipment. Um, we didn't have enough funding available, so we did partner with the Parks Department, and they were able to provide some of the funding. Uh, that park alone, once we, and we also constructed the parking lot, will benefit about 6,000 people from in that area. We also, uh, demolished 17 uh, properties where there were 29 unsafe structures. We paid for the uh, removal of the debris with the National Guard. Uh, our housing rehab program, um, if the home is in such a state of disrepair that we can't fix it up, we will demolish it and reconstruct on the lot. Um, this is an example of two of the homes that we completed during this report here. Uh, the cost of the demolition and the construction of the home was $65,250. Um, so the total cost is about $70,000. The majority of that will be a grant um, deferred either 10 or 5 or 15 years, depending on the 
the homeowner's individual circumstances. And these are the homes. One is on King and one's on Orange Heights. We also uh, rehabbed a home for a family of six. Um, I'm sort of on the north side of town. <coughs> and this is the inside of the home prior to, on the left side of course is before and then after uh, the housing rehab and then the bathroom. So during the report year, we spent $253,000 approximately. We have three that are waiting on the list um, to be assisted. It appears as if two of those are going to be reconstructed. We're fortunate to partner with the nonprofits in the area. Boys and Girls Club has always been one of our, our great partnerships. Um, traditionally, <coughs> they've reported serving about $1,000 or 1000 youth per year, but due to the reporting requirements, a lot of the parents aren't returning the documentation, so we can only report what we can verify. So that's why there, there's only <coughs> 651 showing. Um, Amigos de Valle, uh, although they have a lot of different programs, the one that we support is the one with the home delivered meals so that the, the elderly can remain in their home and independent <coughs> and they get a nutritional meal each day, in addition to the social activities. Uh, Sunshine Haven, we funded for 19,000, um, 30 terminal ill ra residents from Harlingen. Not, oh no, they're not in Harlingen, it's Omito, but 30 Harlingen residents receive care at their 24-hour facility. We also funded a uh, family crisis center for $6,000 where 111 abused children were served. So although the services are traditionally for the mother, uh, our program provides for services to the children of those domestic violence relationships. And then CASA we funded, we also served 111 children with $15,000. So when we're looking at leveraging, which we want to do, we don't want to just hand the money out, we want to leverage all the money that we can bring it back into the community. Um, over $1.4 million were leveraging the programs that we provided approximately $110,000. Uh, Wayne talked a little bit about vacant lots in Harlingen. This is the one of the homes that were constructed by the city on a vacant lot um, on uh, South D Street that we provided. Uh, down we actually paid for the construction and down payment and closing costs. And the funds that came back when we sold the home, they went to the lender. So they got a loan for the 58000 So that went back in to be able to provide assistance to additional people. Um, this is the other home that we did on Oklahoma and they too uh, got a loan from a local lender for $76,000 and then they came in with $2,000 and we gave them $21,000 in home buyer assistance to make it affordable because they can't ma pay more than 30% of their income for the taxes and mortgage and the insurance. So that's why you do the little bit of the buy down to make sure that it's, it's affordable. This is an existing home that the homeowner were provided with just down payment assistance that was for sale. Um, during this report year, the two homes that the city constructed, we sold. We um, provided six people with down payment and closing cost assistance to existing homes, and Community Development Corporation of Brownsville has constructed six <coughs> homes that are currently for sale to the public. At the end of the year, um, the the graph shows where the f the bulk of the funding is is available. Um, and it, most of it is in the housing program, but as you can see by the costs that are involved in that, it, it's going to get absorbed rather quickly. And I have two board members that came out in this cold weather to support me, Mr. Morales, and Mr. Lopez. Yay! Stand up, please. We want to recognize you. <coughs> thank you. Thank you for your service to the community development well, block grant board. Community <laughs> development. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Tammy? <coughs> All right. Uh, you know, this is one of those things that, uh, you know, one of these uh, things that we really, I think, take for granted. You know, it doesn't get a lot of, this doesn't get a lot of attention. Uh, it's not going to be on the front page of the newspaper, but look at the tremendous amount of work that uh, is being done by uh, this department and this board uh, to serve uh, really people that need that kind of a service and, and uh, in our community. So I just I want to congratulate them and congratulate the work that they have uh, that they do every year to better our community and to better the lives of the citizens of our community. With that there is a public hearing that is required.
require it. I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone who'd like to speak for or, uh, uh, or against the caper? Anyone would like to make any comment? Hearing that, I'll close the public hearing and that will conclude that item. There's no action on the item. Item 10 is a consideration and possible action on a resolution authorizing the mayor to accept the modular shooting range from Austin, Texas Police Department. The Austin Interim Police Chief, Brian Manley, has offered the shooting range to the Harlech Police Department at no cost and with the approval of the Austin Mayor, City Manager, and City Council. You, you, you know people in Austin? I do. <laughs> Mayor, Commissioner, City Manager, uh, thank you for considering this item, item 10. Um, the Harlingen Police Department, we currently have no firing range of our own. Uh, we use, uh, we go by on the good graces of some regional ranges, which is challenging and it's one of the most important things we do is keep the skills up of the men and women that, that protect our community uh, because it is a perishable skill. <coughs> The state requires only one time a year in qualifications and uh, we've elevated that standard to three times a year in our department uh, because I think it's very, very important. That includes two live fire sessions and one uh, simulated firing session that is a scenario based and decision making model, not just accuracy. Uh, it also includes use of force training. As a, uh, an interim to help support that, it takes a great deal of time for our folks to get 143 uh, sworn positions out and a 45 minute to an hour round trip out and qualify and back three times a year uh, as we try to keep our folks trained. So looking back, uh, the shoot trailer that's being offered to us by the city of Austin, I actually was involved in purchasing it when I was still there on a grant from the governor's office at a little less than a half million dollars and it was purchased uh, as an interim stopgap as we began our public safety <coughs> training facility about a twenty million dollar capital project and i remembered where it was parked <laughs> so uh... to i reached out to chief brian manley and asked him if it would be available as a transfer from that original grant and uh... he agreed with the approval of the city of austin it is a, a great piece of equipment that will be able to be utilized at our police department 24 hours a day, so day shift officers, evening shift officers, and night shift officers won't have to change their schedule to go qualify. They can do it uh, right after show up and get back on the street without impacting the, their presence in our community, keeping us safe. It's a, uh, a high-end government grade piece of equipment. It's completely bulletproof, completely enclosed. It has a very uh, high-end HVAC system that takes out all the any concerns of gases or lead in the air and has filters that take care of all that and it is a live fire trailer it has uh, the capability of shooting uh, standard targets and it also has a video scenario group that you can run uh, decision making processes that officers go up and have to face actual uh, situations and make uh, decisions and it is live fire they shoot into the screen as the video is going uh, that screen has to be replaced about every 10,000 rounds but other than that and filters, it's a, a fairly low maintenance uh, piece of equipment. It does have a diesel generator, but it also has a tether that uh, we have power at the, at the police department that we can hook up to and avoid the generator. We can also share it with some of our local smaller departments and help them out as well. So I would ask, uh, ask mayor and commission to consider it in approval. So. so moved. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the modular shooting range in Austin. All the, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, mm -hmm. motion carries. Congratulations, right. Chief. That's a thank you. Thank, thank you for taking the initiative on that. And, uh, and I think that's uh, obviously a great, great piece of equipment for our, for our community. And thank you to the city of Austin for absolutely uh, sharing this, uh, this great opportunity with us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, item 11 is the consideration of possible action to change or postpone the date of the Harlingen City Commission regular meeting December 20th. Mayor, Commission, uh, you, the holidays are here and uh, there's been one, one or two comments made about the meeting on the 20th and we can move it or postpone it. So I uh, wanted to get your feedback on either one. We can move it to the 13th, which is next week, or postpone it altogether, and the next meeting would be January the 3rd. 
Or we're not available. I mean, we won't have a form. Or no, it, it's just the holidays, and, and I'm not sure whether everybody was going to be here, so I thought I'd ask. We didn't meet last year, right? No. No, I, I, we moved it to January. I think we moved it. Okay. Do we need to be out of town? Yeah, but yeah. that's mm -hmm. the question. Are you going to be out of town? <coughs> yeah. but, but that's why I brought the pending that we need to. Okay, you're going to be out of town on the 20th. I think Commissioner Del Rose is going to be in his. I'll be in and out. Yeah, my name is Del Rose. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. If we need something, you can always have a special. We, can, we, can always have, we have nothing. We can always call a special meeting. Yeah. Uh, the reason we loaded up this agenda is we, we thought just in case we cancel the 20th. Uh, but if we need a special meeting for some reason, we can have it next week. Okay. What are, what are the wishes of the commission? Postpone to postpone, January. Postpone, okay. Motion to postpone. All second. All those say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. As Fisher, you know, says if we need a if we need a meeting for something, we'll call a special meeting. All right. Thank you. Item 12 is consideration of possible action to approve resolution amending the resolution number R 2017-1 that created the downtown public improvement district as a public improvement district under chapter 372. Okay. Mr. Mr. Commission, City Manager, um, the uh, City Commission approved Resolution R-2017-1 <coughs> on January the 18th of this year. That, or, that resolution created the DID as, as, it, as it exists today. Um, on October 9th, uh, 2017 of this year, the DID Board of Directors voted to amend the boundaries. Uh, there is a map of the, um, of the newly uh, proposed boundaries in your packet. Uh, it essentially covers a three block area. Um, and so we're bringing that to the council for consideration for today. Now, I'd like to go over some of the um, requirements. Uh, anytime you amend a boundary, there are two requirements that you have to meet according to state statute. One is the you have to have 50% of the appraised value represented on the board. If that were the only criteria, then we'd be set because the DID as it exists now has a lot of value. So the newly annexed area into the district would be okay. However, that's not the only requirement. The other requirement is that we represent at least 50% of the square footage in the newly uh, annexed area. So with that, uh, we're gonna have to add memberships to the board. Now the resolution as it exists today uh, allows for us to have 15 members. We currently have 12. Those other three are only allowed to be appointed by the mayor. So what we're going to do is um, ask the mayor to appoint uh, two members tonight, and we're gonna go over some of the process in just a minute. Uh, what we're doing is that one of the board members that exists now in the DID also has property on La Placita. So we're using that calculation for the square footage, and that's Bill DeBrook. Uh, with that, we still need uh, over 30,000 over 30, square feet represented. So we're gonna ask that the mayor appoint Jaime to send this to the board. Uh, he owns Rosendez Auto Repair and represents 28,000 square feet. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. I'm, Rodriguez. Rodriguez. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I wrote it down incorrectly. Uh, and then Stephanie Tremboli. Uh, she represents Rio Grande Grill. Um, now we still need about 2,000 square feet uh, more on the board, so we'd like to come back at the next meeting with, with the uh, with the final name mayor, if that's okay with the council, um, <coughs> for that. We wanna make sure that the people that we ask that you appoint on the board are, are willing to serve. Uh, these two have indicated that they would. Uh, they also signed the petition as well, so uh, we would still be one member short, but uh, they have to go through the clearing process through the city secretary's office. So by the time they're cleared, we would have that other member to present to the board. Also in your packet is information on the percentages that uh, were signed uh, by the, uh, by the uh, representatives downtown and they're all over 60%. So uh, obviously we try to get 100% uh, response but we can't always do that because people are unavailable or just don't wanna sign but I think the percentages that we had to uh, petition the board to get into the district were pretty high. So with that, we're asking for the city council to approve the resolution uh, and include those two members that we requested to be on the board as well. Okay, is there a, uh, any questions for 
game. <coughs> we have, we know we have some uh, downtown board members here and uh, representatives of, of the of the down uh, of property owners of the downtown, and everybody's on board with uh, changes that are uh, that are being proposed tonight. Bill. Hearing no desire. I, <coughs> you can nod, Bill. I, I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see that. I see nods of the head, so <laughs> I'm taking that as a, a, a yes. Uh, so, is there a motion to adopt the resolution, approve the resolution? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Thank you for all you uh, folks do in downtown to make a Congratulations. great downtown for all of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Consider item 13 is consideration of possible action to make plan changes to the City of Harlan 401A plan for 2018 to add loan capabilities for participants in the plan. Okay. Um, one of the items that came up during the discussions uh, with the unions was that they asked if there could be a provision in the um, in the current 401A plan to allow for participants to actually borrow from the plan. Right now, if they want to have access to it, they have to they have to uh, resign uh, or retire. Um, and the idea is that we want to give them access to the plan without losing the people. So, on October 1st of this year, the IAC uh, Investment Advisory Committee. Uh, I'm sorry. On Wednesday, November 29th, the IAC voted to approve. Uh, changes to the plan. Now the plan is only available for those people that were hired after October 1st, uh, 2007, except for fire. Uh, they have their own pension plan. Uh, now the changes that were approved by the board uh, include the following. One is that uh, a loan has to be for a minimum of $1,000. Uh, you can only borrow half of your value or $50,000, whichever is less. And the loan must be repaid uh, within five years, unless it's for a down payment assistance for a first time home buyer, then you get up to 15 years to repay the debt. Um, the interest rate is 2% above prime. Uh, right now the prime is 4.25, but it'll fluctuate uh, daily. Um, and all the interest payments go back into the participant account. Uh, there is one uh, maximum of one loan outstanding per participant, and the loans must be made by payroll deduction. Now, um, there could be some circumstances where uh, payroll deductions may not be available. For instance, if the employee is, is out on sick leave and has no more vacation or sick leave, then there would be no, no pay uh, to deduct from. Uh, in that event, if there's a 90-day a period where a loan is not made, then it's considered a distribution uh, to the participant. And then should the employee uh, leave the city of Harlingen, then the loan does not have to be paid uh, immediately. They'll continue that. Uh, pay directly to the uh, uh, to the company. So with those changes, uh, the board uh, made a motion to approve this, and we're recommending the city council do this as well. Al, who is going to administer the <coughs> loan program? TCG. TCG. Yes, they'll be made directly to them. And from what I can tell, typically uh, when companies allow people to borrow, because a lot of companies don't allow people to borrow, just like we didn't. Um, they limit what they can use it for because obviously you don't want somebody to lose this retirement money on a frivolous expenditure. And so uh, typically to pay education expenses for the person, their spouse or their family, uh, to prevent eviction from your current home, to pay unreimbursed medical expenses, and to buy a first time residence. Those are the ones that they usually use. Did y'all talk about that? No, there, there wasn't any um, type of restriction placed on the um, um, on the, the loan proceeds. And I think the reason for that was because, um, like I said, the unions wanted access to their to their funding. And we thought this might be a good way to keep them on board without actually having to lose an officer for him just to have access to his, to his funds. Well, one of the comments that had come up, had come up during the discussions with uh, the union was that we had officers that were leaving to gain access to their funds. And if there was another mechanism in place where they could borrow against those funds, maybe they would, they would stay. Uh, and so we thought if we could create that mechanism within the retirement system and limit the amount they could take, um, that would be a positive thing. 
the union itself was very receptive to that idea and thought we should move forward with that, and that's what we were doing. If, if I may speak on this, I, I know quite a bit about 401 law. Um, what happens in America is when this is put in, people take it as the piggy bank and they borrow, they mortgage their future for their present. Uh, economically, it's a horrible thing to do, but human nature being what it is, people do what they do. Um, they can take money out to buy a dually. They can take money out to do anything they want, but they have to pay it back. Uh, if they don't pay it back, it's a taxable event. If they're under 59 and a half, they have to pay income taxes and a 10% penalty. Should they leave employment for whatever reason and they don't pay it back that lump sum then on leaving employment is fully taxable. And once again, if you're under 59 and a half, you pay income tax and the 10% penalty. In either case, if you're over 59 and a half, you pay income tax on it. So somebody taking $10,000 out may or may not trigger um, an increase in their taxable uh, rate, but somebody taking out 40 or 60 or $100,000 and reneging on the promise can jump them up from, say, 15% bracket to 25 or 35 or 38 and a half. Um, but that's what's happening in America. Um, I discourage people from ever doing this. However, I have no control over anybody's human nature. And uh, Commissioner, we talked about it at the board meeting. Uh, we we voiced a concern that it's not a good idea to borrow from your 401A, but it's a mechanism to actually keep from losing our police officers and allow them to actually. I, I, I understand. I mean, God said to Eve, don't eat of the apple. And Adam said, hey, let's do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I understand. Uh, one question I have. You know, where my wife works, they have the typical 401k and everybody borrows. Um, the, the, the plan that we had prior to this plan, does it allow to borrow the money for any reason at all? TMRS, no. TMRS, no. Right, so you can borrow the money for any reason at all? No, you can't borrow from TMRS. No. You cannot borrow from no. You cannot, no. TMRS? You cannot borrow from at TMRS. All? No. No. Yeah. Now, just you may or may not get that money depending on whether or not you retire. Yeah. No, 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 I know that. I'm, just, I'm trying to compare apples to apples because yeah. Okay, TM but just TMRS, it isn't the, the city's contribution is technically like yours until after 20 years of service. Okay. So if you try to do something in between, you leave in between there, that money does not go with you. Okay. Only your contribution is yours. Okay. okay. So no. that's why it, so there's, there's no so reason why it's not allowed. The, the, the prior plan had no money in it, so this would be something new for us? Yes. Okay. okay. That's what or my real question is. Is this something new for yes. us? For, for pension plans, yes. Now, we do offer additional 401A uh, retirement plans for the city. We have three. Uh, those, there's no uh, city contribution to those, just employee <coughs> contributions, but those you can borrow from. But, that's, so but that's, that's not mandatory, that's just voluntary. Right, but if I was on the voluntary 401K, mm -hmm. I could borrow against it for, yes. for, a, yes. for a vote? Yes. yes, for whatever you want. I, up, I, up I to. just want to clarify where we're at because I know where my wife works. Uh, I, I'll reiterate what. Commissioner Mesmar said, I, I see so many people that work there that my, my wife gets to retire in 10 days. She, she gets to go home. But I see so many people that she works with that will never get to go home. And so, you know, I, I understand we, we human nature is just a position that we have to take personally. I had a question, <clears throat> just so that I'm clear. When right now, currently, then, and, and I'm, well, maybe you can answer that. When um, somebody leaves and they take their money with them, do we have matching funds that go with that, that cost us money? Yes, uh, and the TCG plan, they are fully vested day one. Right, so when that when they leave, that money goes out of that account. It's it both cities and there. So by allowing this to happen, it would help to keep that money in the account and keep some employees employed, right? Well, well they're yes. leaving to access it. Right, right. no, what I'm it's saying, it's but it's if they have access, I mean, yes. Yes, yeah, that's the intent. The, the intent is the hey, comments we received. The comments we received back from the union was that 
you had officers leaving to gain access to those funds where they normally wouldn't have that because we don't have this component. And, and, and my point is that that costs us money as well, right? When they, when they pull the funds, yeah. have, when we have funds dedicated to them that we weren't going to pay off for another yes. 10 years or whatever. They can, well, the money is there and it's their money. So it doesn't <coughs> cost us anything. They're just taking what we've contributed over time that they can do anything they want with if they want to pay the penalty on it and the tax. It's theirs. <coughs> So it doesn't cost us doesn't one cost penny if they decide to take their money. <coughs> Thank you. We, we, our match is made. With That's the difference between the TCG plan and the TMRS is, is immediately in the TCG plan. Once the check leaves here every month and it goes into your account, it's your money. Mm -hmm. And in the TMRS plan, only your contribution is your money, not the whole contribution, not the city's part. If you leave early, you don't get the city part. Okay. Right. So, so I just want to make it real clear. Under the current plan, that money is mine no matter what. It doesn't cost the city anything. The city's already expensed it. Right. Right. And all we're yeah. allowing them to do is that if somebody needs access to that money, they don't have to quit the city to get it. Right. They can borrow the money, they can pay it back, and everybody is whole, and if they happen to leave, they're, they can only borrow enough that if they decide to, you know, something happens, they get separated, the money gets paid back. They're borrowing from themselves. If I go to the bank and I say, bank, I have $50,000, can I borrow 20 of it? When and, you and, say then, and then the interest they pay back goes back to their, no, nobody gets that interest. That's not a bank that's making the money. They're paying themselves back the that's interest. Right. That's correct. <laughs> Except that when they leave, they really don't pay it back. They just have a taxable event that occurs to them if they don't pay it back, where it's income now and a penalty and tax. Right, but my point is the right. city is not going to, we're not holding the bag for, we're not making the loan out of the city, they're making the loan out from them, their own money. Yeah. And we're just allowing them to do that. That's um, right. I, I, I have a couple of observations to make, and I think this has been a good discussion. I appreciate everybody's. Uh, input on this. Um, there, uh, uh, there have been a bunch. Of, there have been some numbers thrown up, thrown out about uh, vacancies or people leaving the department, the police department, uh, which are which have been inaccurate numbers. Those numbers are not accurate. Uh, uh, and, and if you look at the real numbers, they're they're much lower than. People were some people were saying and what was being reported in the news. Uh, so the other observation is is that we've had this in place since 2007. Yes, 2007. Uh, so 10 years, uh, and and uh, you know there hasn't been a big demand uh, to to change this. And I know and I know that during that 10 year period, because I looked at the I looked at the attrition numbers, there haven't been a lot of people. There hasn't been a lot of turnover in the, with the HPD. So, um, w would any of the commissioners be willing to uh, go to, say, one committee meeting, like Commissioner Hillhorn, Commissioner Mesmar? Would y'all be willing to go to one meeting and just look at this uh, with the staff and go over all the rationale for whether or not we want to do this or? or and then come back with a recommendation, or are you all are you all satisfied that you know what you want to do? Oh, I think that you I'll, don't want to do. I'll it. speak again. I have 401ks. I have companies with 401ks in the Rio Grande Valley, and uh, logic never overcomes emotion, and you cannot um, counter um, human nature. Right. They can take the money if they want it, if they want to pay the tax and the penalty, can't they? Right. They can and just take it out. It'll be a 10% uh, right. yeah, penalty. No, 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 this would be a loan. They could take it. No, but if, the, but if they wanted to, if we didn't allow them to take the loan, they could always not, just... Not as long as you're employed. No, they'd have to quit. They'd have to you, quit. you would have to quit. And then they'd, they'd have and, to petition and to get the IRS money. rules, you could only take out X percent of the assets in the account and then the uh, third party administrator, <laughs> the administrator of the funds, 
determines how much you can take out and what your pay uh, schedule, your payback schedule is, and it's taken out of your future uh, paychecks to pay that money back. And then there's no taxable event as long as you pay that money back. Sure, I'm just, I'm just wondering whether anybody wants any more information on this, whether they want to table this, or whether you, you already make a decision. Well, I have a question. I mean, how long has this been going? Has this, did this just come up? Um, you've been talking about this for a while and gone to, so, and this is what they want. I mean, this is. Uh, it, you remember, we, we talked about it during the collective bargaining mm -hmm. discussion. This is one of the things they, they brought to the table, mm -hmm. uh, and they discussed on, on several occasions. And I had discussed that with the city council, and that this is something that we could possibly do. Uh, in addition to that, one more component that we could do with the, with an annuity component uh, that we're, we're looking at as well. And, and are you recommending that the staff recommend? Well, the IC board approved it, so we're recommending that the city council we approve it as well. Yeah, okay. uh, the the IC is a pension board that oversees the this particular investment. Mayor, unless you feel that there's something that we're not seeing that from that board, this, this is coming from that board. I well, what I'm, what I'm hearing from, what I'm hearing is opposite, I'm hearing at least some opposition uh, to do it, and I'm hearing the staff okay. recommending it. I'm also hearing a, a rationale that uh, they want it because people are leaving to get it, and I don't, I'm not sure, that hasn't been quantified for me. Nobody's given me a report that says, you know, 15 people left because they want to take their retirement out. Um, I, you know, uh, as opposed to three people left because they want to take their retirement out. I don't know what it is. I also don't know, uh, I mean, I, I think this is a response to some, some you know, the, the earlier negotiation, uh, but is it really something that is it really something that they want? Uh, is it really something that will will enhance the you know the benefits? So I've got you know I'm hearing some commissioners saying I don't I don't think we ought to do this. Uh, I've got the staff saying they think they want to, they want to do it, and I'm hearing the uh, third thing, and that is if we're going to let them do it. They are restricted to certain. Certain types of things that they get out for you. You, you cannot yeah. restrict it by law. Mm -hmm. You cannot restrict it by law. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't I know. Did. What I okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he says you can't, but you say you can. So I don't know. I have multiple securities licenses. <laughs> okay. Uh, the the uh, thing, they, the they, thing is, so 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 the only I'm just saying. Do you want? To, does anybody want more information? I, I, I mean, that's okay. If, you're if you want more information, that's that somebody needs to take, make a motion to table this. No, no. I don't think there's any urgency to, to take this action. I don't know that we need to do it. But what I would like to say is this costs the city nothing and it gives the employees economic freedom. Uh, whether they use that freedom wisely or not is not of our concern. Okay, well, then you're not. But What's what right. are the wishes right. of the commission? I, I would like to take a vote. Okay. Will somebody make a motion. I'll make the motion to approve. Uh, does this resolution need to be met, uh, be read by the attorney? No. It's just uh, if, if there's going to be a motion to approve it, I'll need the second to vote and, and pass it. Okay. On item number <coughs> 13, I'll make a motion uh, to accept what has been presented. Second. <coughs> second. Motion of a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those, aye. Opposed, those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. All right, thank you. Um, next item up is item 14 appointment, board appointments. Are there any board appointments? Uh, I have none. All right, no Mayor, board appointments. Mayor, uh, in light of the way that the item number 12 is written, was limited to an action item to approve the resolution to expand the district boundaries. Um, and I heard that Assistant City Manager Rosales also make a recommendation about doing board appointments there. That that item is listed here under, under this item. So if, if this, I, I would recommend that the commission uh, consider 
his board appointment recommendations under this uh, item since it was not thank you. part of the uh, resolution. Okay, is there a motion to approve the board appointments? Uh, some motions that were made or the, re uh, the recommendations for the downtown improvement district board. We have a motion, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like some. Thank you. All right. Uh, then item 15 is here, executive session uh, number A pursuant to chapter 551, subchapter D, BPCA, government code sections 551, 08, 071, 072, and 097 to discuss or deliberate regarding commercial and financial information the city is receiving business prospects to locate, stay, or expand with the city, negotiations or other incentives with ULA. Also, regarding commercial and financial uh, information with this prospect, uh, known as Project Warside, to, to obtain legal advice and to consult the city attorney in connection with the NPO work. There was a motion to go into the executive, into executive session. So we move. Second. And all those favor say aye. 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 All right, then we are in executive session. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to uh, meet in the conference room to talk with our lawyer and to talk about that development matters. There could be an action item when we return. All right, we're out of executive session. Uh, 732. 732. So we need to go to item. Oh, sorry, go ahead. We have to go to item 16, which is consideration of possible action on Project Waterside as discussed in executive session. Is there a motion to authorize the city manager to proceed as discussed in executive session? Project Waterside. So moved. Second. Any uh, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Item 17, there's nobody signed up for civic, civic no, communication, so we are adjourned. <laughs>